Welcome back. Uh, we're continuing our review of the Powerwall XTM 211DI 4-in-1 uh, multiprocess machine. Uh, we're going to have a look at the DC TIG function. Uh, we've got another video showing you AC function. This one we're just going to focus on the DC TIG function. Just going to go right back to the beginning. Um, so long press on the button here. Takes me to the beginning. TIG. I'm going to do manual setup. 2T trigger. DC. HF start, no pulse, and I'm into the welding screen there. The particular job I'm going to do today is on a, some 5mm uh, uh, stainless plate. Um, so I've already sort of dialed in my settings and I've actually saved those to memory. Um, if you want to call something a job up from memory that you used previously, if you just long press go back to the home screen, press the memory and it shows all the jobs you've got in the memory. I put it into job four here, select that, that takes me into the job. So I'm, I'm ready to weld now. So I'll get my helmet on and uh, let's run a weld. Okay, so I've got five millimeter plate. Uh, I'm gonna continue this bead uh, along the plate. Set the machine, 126 amps, 2.4 millimeter tungsten and a filler rod. So a little short bead there, uh, release the trigger at the end, you've got the, uh, the slope out and the uh, post cast. So pretty straightforward. Um, we'll have a look at some of the other features on the machine now. Just switch the uh, pulse on now just to give you uh, an idea of what happens with the pulse. I select a slightly higher main current and a uh, quite low background current. And we'll just go over the top here. So we've got the, uh, the first bead here, 126 amps, uh, no pulse. Uh, the second bead here, which was overlaid over the top, uh, that was running about 140 amps peak, 70 amps background, and about 80 hertz uh, on the pulse. So we're just going to run through some of the functionality you've got in uh, DC TIG in terms of the range of adjustment you've got. So we just drill into that, manual set. 2T, DC, HF, and we'll have uh, pulse on. So if we just move across the uh, bar chart, pre-gas flow, that's how much gas you're gonna get before you start welding. Initial current, I'm in 2T mode, and you'll notice the red dot will skip that at the moment. You, that's only available when you're in 4T. Uh, you press and hold the trigger, that gives you the initial current, whatever you've dialed in here. Release the trigger, it'll then go to slope up. I've got that at 1.7 seconds at the moment. That will wind all the way up to 10 seconds, um, but you're more than likely going to be around the one to two second mark, unless you're spot welding, where you would wind that down to zero, so you bang straight in with a full welding current. Moving on from there, 
Uh, we're on pulse, so we, we get the pulse parameters here. If we had this pulse switched off, we'd be using the main welding current here. So peak current, we see maximum current uh, we're going to weld at. That will adjust through the range of the machine from 10 to 200 amps. And then how long it spends at that, the peak current. So it's currently 55%. You can go all the way to 100, which effectively means you'll never have your, your back gang current. And likewise, you can wind it all the way uh, down to 5%. So you only get that top current for a very brief uh, period of time. Pulse frequency, maximum is 200 hertz, and you can wind it all the way down to half a hertz. The lower frequencies, half, one, two hertz, is what you're going to use on thin material where you're trying to control heat input. Uh, and typically you'd be adding your filler metal when it's on the top of the uh, pulse uh, and then moving on uh, uh, when it's at background current level. Uh, if you've got uh, it up at the higher frequencies, um, sort of 50 and above, you start to pull in the, the arc, get a very tight arc, improves your penetration, reduces the heat spread, uh, so gives a lot more control to the arc and reduces the heat spread and improves your welding speed, especially if you've got a, a higher peak current set. And the final adjustment there is the base current, so that's the current it drops down to uh, at the bottom of the pulse. Again, fully adjustable within the range of the machine, 10 to 200 amps. Slow down time, so when I release the trigger, how long it takes for it to slow down before the arc goes off. If I'm in 4T mode, uh, it'll go through the slow down time and then it'll go into the final current. And as long as I hold the trigger down on the, on the torch, it'll hold that final current for as long as I want to create a fill. And then when I release it, uh, it'll go off and it'll go into the uh, pulse gas time, which uh, that's adjustable not to 10 seconds. Obviously, um, quite important to protect your weld until it's got down to a safe temperature. So that's adjustable up to 10 seconds for the more sensitive uh, materials. So full range of uh, adjustments there, you do, the sort of thing you'd expect on, to, on a, a full-blown TIG machine, uh, but built within this uh, multi-process machine. Um, we will be posting some more videos uh, where we're going to the MMA and the MIG functions, so watch out for those videos as well. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, any more information, uh, contact your local Powell dealer or uh, have a look at us online. Thanks for watching. Thank you.